God and I said, if, if, if I'm going to do this, I got to do it full throttle. I just got to dive myself right into it. No holds barred. And for the last five years, I've just been kind of just grinding at it. I mean, I've been working on it for 20, 25 years, you know what I'm saying? As an artist and just as a producer and all of those things. But I finally decided to just give it all up and take it seriously over the last five, six years. So I've just been grinding and, uh, and just been blessed with a lot of different opportunities, just kind of parlaying my skills, leveraging my, my, my opportunities and my skills to get bigger and better opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's sharing stages with, with certain cats or, or going on tour or working with artists and, you know, making beats or whatever the case is, just trying to find more and more opportunity to get, get my voice heard. You know, I, I've been kind of hearing that, um, I don't want to say just recently recently but I, I mean it's been kind of a theme throughout i would say the last co year maybe two years is like that message is sometimes you just got to make that take that leap and, and go all in with it man because um i've heard quite a few people say that and if anything i know it it's not easy i mean it's a struggle but the thing is i i feel like people are more rewarded mentally and you know what i'm saying emotionally by by doing that move um, from what I've seen, at least from a lot of the artists I've spoken with. Yeah, no, you, you, you have to gamble on yourself. If you, if you really feel that you have a shot at this music industry or you feel like you have a shot to, to make a living as an artist, there's no way to do it without gambling on yourself. There's no way to do this and then try to maintain a nine to five and keep your boss happy while you miserable. There's no way to do, you know what I'm saying? There's, I don't think there's a real happy in between. So you gotta like, if you really trust in your skill set, if you really trust in your abilities as an artist, as a creative, or even if you just wanna find more opportunity for yourself in that kind of world, you just, you gotta put yourself in it. And it's gonna come with struggle, it's gonna come, no one, you know what I'm saying? No one said it's gonna be easy, so it's gonna come with its share of struggle. But you have to, as an artist, you have to recognize what your what your destination is and where you're trying to go with it and as long as you keep that in mind then you're solid you know what's crazy is you said no one said it's gonna be easy and you hear that all the time but it's still i see like a lot of times like you know up and coming artists um they forget that part a lot like it's not nobody said it was gonna be easy you know you're gonna go through this and that and you know just because you're the, what's popping this week don't mean you have to you know you don't have to ride it out to have longevity you know what i'm saying so um that's crazy because a lot of people it's a saying but a lot of people don't really take it take heed to it you know no one said For it's sure. gonna be easy man hey um what what made you um was it kind of just knowledge of, i mean something that's important that you said is you're also a producer um yeah. and that that's something you know as especially someone taking the leap and and doing it full throttle um it, it, you can wear a couple hats you could be the artist you could also be the producer but what made you want to actually start producing as well um sheer sheer impatience like i was i was getting tired of i hear that a lot <laughs> i hear that a lot doc i get so tired of working with producers and you, you come up with decent ideas or you, you hear a song that you want to sample and see what it sounds like as a beat and you send it to producers and you give them some vision and you never hear from them again either they they you know they come two years later with the beat you asked for for next week or you know they they disappear on you or something happens in life so i just got tired of that so i found myself a, a, a hacked version of um fruity loops back in the days called fl studio and i just started working on just trying to create just get get the ideas out of my head and maybe give it to a producer who, who knew better than me but through that process you just learn how to make dope beats and you know what i'm saying and i think every producer has the story of when they they've been making beats over and over and the beats aren't really that great until you find that one sample that one drum kit that makes the beat sound beautiful and then that just as a producer it, it, it gives you the motivation to actually keep doing it because you made your first dope beat and that's how it worked for me i was just making like you know so so beats and then there was the one that i actually wanted to rap over and then i just started moving it from there and then i took a break from it but then i got back into it because as i was making the transition into being an artist full time i was also being a teaching artist so a lot of the money i was making was coming from teaching younger people you know what i'm saying teaching kids in high school and junior high school how to make beats so just by from that i started just refining my own process as a producer learning how to like sample and chop up things and and, and, and do it better and, and, and really articulate the ideas that I have in my head, being able to do that from from a from a teacher standpoint and then learning myself, 
just got me into like full throttle producer mode where like now I'm making beats and I'm making beats. People say I make bass beats like a rapper because I make beats thinking about punchlines and thinking about where I'm gonna put the drop so I can say something dope um, and, and trying to create and format all of my songs based on that. And you know, the last three albums I've dropped, I've dropped four albums on iTunes and Spotify and all that. I've dropped several mixtapes over the last, you know, two decades, right? But the last four, the last three projects of mine have been all self-produced. Where hey, I'm, just, I'm making all the beats. We're running down the line right now, but uh, yeah, just to add on to what you were saying, like I've heard that um, not only on the production side, but like music videos as well. Like certain artists will come in, go, man, I do my own visuals you know and it came from yeah. like that kind of thing is like you know what i got tired of waiting i told them i wanted this done i gotta wait another week and it's like i get i gave them the money so i just learned how to do that shit myself you know what i mean absolutely so, yeah, yeah that's you put yourself in position real talk so hey go ahead run it down the line man let them know all the projects you got out and where they could find them and all that yeah so right now i got an album that i just dropped this summer called light years it's a it's a 16 track self-produced record um all bangers you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm sure a lot of mcs say that but it's really it's a really dope hip-hop record you know what i'm saying like if you're looking for real hip-hop if you're looking for something that has that that modern feel to it but also still old school in the sense that this is this is the right project for you you know what i'm saying i'm really proud of it um it was it was featured in the source magazine first time i was ever featured in the source magazine came with this album I've, uh, you know people been showing me a lot of love on it so i just i appreciate it but then also i got the album universes i put that out two years ago but that's still doing well people still love that project so you know i got i got projects for days i'm working on some new stuff i just dropped the song on friday so just trying to keep busy you know what i'm saying but the but the album light years that's that's the main project right now. there it is make sure you guys go check for that and all that stuff right there man and uh hey um you you mentioned uh where you grew up you know kind of the mecca of hip-hop um and then now you're you're on this you're on our side a little a little bit on the mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying in the Bay Area, man. Go ahead, go ahead and speak about that transition. How long you've been over there, and and uh, and what's crazy is uh, to add on to that though is both spots are like really, really hip hop. Either way, you know, it's just Indeed. a whole different style. You know, what I'm saying? yeah, it's a it's a different vibe altogether. I mean, I've been in the Bay Area on and off for like the last 17 years. Like, okay, I've been down here like right after like the music industry in New York was kind of like messing me up and, uh -huh. and screwing me over. So I just came out here for really what what was a change of scenery. Forth, but then I decided to make the Bay Area my home. And, just the Bay Area music scene is, is, is really vibrant, is really diverse. There's a lot of different people, a lot of different voices, not everybody in the same lane, which is really great and refreshing. And you just get a lot of support. Just the, my kind of sound and my kind of artistry, people show love and 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 they support it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm really blessed to, to be in a, in a privileged position of one of those artists who's able to have a following and have people you know come out to my shows and and really respect the work that i do you know what i'm saying in and out the booth and as a producer as an mc as an educator all of these different things so the bay area shows a lot of love new york still you know is still new york and it's always going to be new york and you, you just got to hold a special place in your heart for that yeah man and you know something that that dope that you mentioned and it kind of takes me back to what you were saying earlier is about you know the golden era times and i i speak about this a lot but what about what i always enjoyed about that time is the diversity in the music you know and and hip-hop you know at the time you know obviously it's older now um but there was so many like you could turn on the radio or i shouldn't say radio but you could turn on or or be at a club whatever it might be but you could hear anything from nwa to de la soul in the same playlist in the same playlist and totally different styles of music and that's something that i've always dug even when i go to live shows um i still like to see that like an artist you don't have to all be the same style to be dope and, and a lot of people uh kind of lose that i think i think they're trying to sound like someone else instead of just come out with your with your style and and just be dope that's it dog and you know what yeah I mean? that's that's just part of the culture, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think if you grew up in the culture, immersed in it, whether it was the 90s or the early 2000s, you you recognize the value of being original. And I think a lot of people lose sight of that because they're always trying to, quote unquote, get on, right? Get signed or blow up as an artist, whatever the whatever the hell that means, to be honest with you. I don't even know anymore. 
everybody's trying to fit into a particular pocket, everybody trying to look the same, have the same vibe in their music with the hopes of getting plucked out of obscurity so that you can go viral and have like millions of views on your videos, but it doesn't really sustain as a career. You know what I'm saying? You get that one little spike and then next year, you know, no one's really looking for you like that. But I think if you stay original, there's value in that because you speak to a specific kind of people and you speak to a specific kind of experience that people are always going to look for. Gonna, and that's going to carry you more and more. If you're, if you're dope and you're original, it just, it just, it's a match made in heaven. And then you build that core base too, that it's going to ride with you no matter what. And then yeah, if you do hit a, you know, maybe hit a hot something that's popping at that, whatever it might be, you can gain some people along the way. But if you got your, I feel like if you got your core, man, they're going to ride with you as you as you make your moves. And that's a powerful thing. Someone I um, associate that with is someone like way back, like Ice Cube. He always kept like his core and, mm -hmm. um, you know, what I'm saying. And then no matter what the moves he made, they kind of rolled with him and you know, it's, it's, it's been pretty dope to see kind of that progress from someone like that that builds a core and then keeps it moving, man. So, hey, uh, what what uh, video you want to play? We'll play a video and then we'll come back. Yeah, no, for sure. Let's get into the um, Let There Be Light record. That's a, that's the first song off the Light Years album that I dropped this summer. Um, the, the video was directed by my homeboy Landry Capangua. He's a dope uh, hip hop videographer or, or director whatever you want to call him out here in the bay area and, and uh, we put this together and um it's the first song on the album and and, and officially officially the project dropped in july you said right yeah it dropped the last day of july just to okay. just to kind of ride the august wave because it was i knew there was a lot of stuff coming out in august so i wanted to get all that yeah man there it is right there we're gonna get into this video we'll be right back man unlearn the world let's go sometimes when you least expect it, you look around you and you're surrounded by darkness. In those moments, it's easy for that darkness to consume us. But in the midst of it all, if you just take a quick moment to look deep inside, you can find the light within. And once you find it, it's hard not to see it. Let there be light. That the world's gone crazy Voices in my head can't save me I am what they made me I do what I do, you can't blame me I took what they gave me Sticks and stones never break me They all try to change me But I took what I had and I my way from the blocks where the black people talk Spanish Getting out of my neighborhood was something hard to manage And even if I was shot with a semi-automatic It couldn't compare to all the emotional scars and damage Now they call us savage cause they got us all balanced Slums, dog, millionaire, my brain's a Taj Mahal palace In Wonderland with a Alice, I followed the white rabbit Rocket mob deep, I was a prodigy living in havoc Now I'm teaching classes and I'm asking do the youth listen? How the fuck we got old broke schools but new prisons? I'm trying to introduce the Afrofuturism while the young boys thinking cash flow the new religion. I'm too realistic to be a Sufi mystic. I'm too in tune with the heavens to be materialistic. I grew up in this neighborhood, my new neighbor didn't. Difference being she was staying, but I was getting evicted. My brother was getting sentenced when the Benz I bought was vintage. Raised in the same house, but there was a big difference. The playground where I played had crack vowels and syringes. The windows to my soul is limo and mirror tinted. Now I travel through the world's enigmas. Homie, I'm a winner in the chess game. My life would think similar to Bobby Fisher. Looking for nicer weather. The days are cold, the nights are stormy I be giving food for thought, but niggas catch the itis on me I still feel my birthright is glory So I go along with the melody angels sing when they write my story Who would've thought as a ghetto shorty I would be mentally moving through different dimensions Like I was Rick and Morty Opening bigger doors and that's word of my nigga Corey With what I've done, he would applaud me if he lived and he saw me Caught between the streets where the wolves and the snakes meet The only thing worse than fake woke is fake sleep Lay me down to rest, pray the Lord my soul to keep I wonder if the younger me is proud of the older me let me your ears as i conquer my fears my glow up came out of dark days these are my light these years. are my life.
We're back in here, bsideshow.net, every single Monday night. The livest artists coming through, doing their thing. Uh, we got performances, DJs, artwork, livest hosts, man, guests, all that shit every single week. Make sure you guys tell your people. Right now, we got to learn the world, man. And uh, um, I wanted to ask, too, because I, I was reading some of the, the bio and stuff, and you work with some, some big dogs and... Well, when I say that, it's because I'm a I'm a big time. One of my favorite of all time is Big Daddy Kane, man. And you got <laughs> to did you perform with him, or you got to do work on music. Yeah, I got to I got to go on tour with him um, a few years back. It was called the Lyricist Lounge uh, Club Series Tour. And for those who don't know, Lyricist Lounge was like it was an event in New York City. It was like a weekly event where in the early 90s or late 2000 or early 2000s as well, like all throughout the early 90s and 2000s, they were breaking some of the biggest acts, like people like Biggie Smalls started at Lyricist Lounge, other MCs started at Lyricist Lounge. So they took that that notoriety in the culture and they started this this nationwide tour. And um, I was blessed and privileged to, to be on that tour for three months. I opened up for groups like Dead Prez, Killer Mike, when he was just coming out, I was opening up for Killer Mike. Um, Eric Sermon, uh, Boot Camp Click, but Big Daddy Kane was on the tail end of the tour, like the last, uh, the Dead Prez, you know, um, we were at the last end of the tour and Big Daddy Kane was the, the headliner for that last leg of the tour. And, uh, it was really, it was really a dope experience seeing him. He, he still got it. Like the, the, the era of the eighties that he's from, that everybody crowned him as like the king of hip hop. You see why and you see like the true essence of hip hop every time he performs. I even just saw, I just saw a video not too long ago of him performing in Russia. And I think it was like last year and it looked straight B-boy jam style hip hop. Mm -hmm. And he didn't lose a step. It was just, you know, it was amazing to watch him work. I mean, he does a, a you know, his set is kind of like, he takes a little playoff, almost like a James Brown style. And, uh, yeah. and, and the thing is, is, he kind of is like I've seen him perform probably I want to say over 20 years ago and then I've seen some update like that was live and then I've seen mm -hmm. some updated stuff and bro man he, he like you said it, it seemed like he hasn't lost a step man he's an entertainer man that shit's dope and that's a uh, kind of you know that goes along with that 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 golden era stilo man is like motherfuckers were there to put on a show and and entertain and and that's that's something I, I hope doesn't get lost in translation as we keep moving forward with this thing. But um, exactly. hey, have have you gotten a chance to perform at all or anything like that virtually or anything during these crazy times, man? Yeah, it's been it's been really interesting. I mean, a lot of the shows nowadays are pre-recorded, so they they basically have you perform in front of the the phone or whatever camera you have access to, and like there's been those shows. But I was really blessed to to do a show out here in San Francisco at this spot called the Midway with this group called Zion I, they're really big in the Bay Area. Uh, I was opening up for them along with Lil MC and, and, and my DJ, DJ Soros. Um, and it was dope. It was, it was a live performance, right? And the entire audience was in the patio section of the venue. So everybody was outside watching the whole show as we were performing inside on a jumbotron. So outside, everybody can see other this really big screen and inside we're just on stage rocking in front of cameras. There's really not a lot of people in front of us, um, but it was a really dope show. Like they had dope visuals. The show was sold out, which is, you know what I'm saying? It's the first sold out show I've done. Uh, so I was really happy, especially on the heels of this album that got released and people showing love for that. It was cool to do a, a sold out show, um, even if it was socially distanced, you know what I'm saying? But that was a really cool, cool experience. I hope to do something like that again in the future. Um, but all the, everything else has been kind of pre-recorded, and you just got to find better ways of making your performance quality. So if it has to, if you have to basically create a music video out of your performance, then that's what you do, and you have to adapt to to the times in order to keep keep relevant. Yeah, adapting and then, uh, yeah, reimagining the way you present it to the people. But the people still want to hear the music; they still want to see the visuals. So. Yeah, it's a, I think that's a, a good thing. What, what you just said is like, it's kind of, you just got to put in a little extra work to bring it to them. That's all. Hey, um, the, the, one more thing I wanted to talk about before, you know, we get into shout outs and all that. But um, you've also found a way to, to, to make time for the youth and to teach. And, 
you know, that's something we try to do here too as the B-Side show. We do different events and stuff that kind of caters to the youth and, you know, uh, mentorship, mentorship towards, you know, whether it's music or visuals or anything um, in, in entertainment fields. But you've, you've found a way to uh, make time for that. Can you speak on some of the work you've done with kids and stuff on teaching? Yeah, certainly. Um, one of the things I appreciate about the Bay Area the most is that there's a lot of uh, like intersections, like there's a lot of me meeting between artists and activists. Like they, they run in the same circles. Educators, we all run in the same circles. So, you know, in the Bay Area, we have a lot of nonprofit organizations, but there, there are a lot of nonprofit organizations that specifically focus on not only just music, but hip hop. So I'm really proud to, to represent a, a lot of different hip hop organizations that are nonprofits that allow me to go into schools and talk to kids about the history and the culture of hip hop, give them the information that they may never have known, even though they love the music, they may never have known about DJ Cool Herc or Run DMC or all the people who paved the way and the pioneers. So to give them that knowledge, to give them that information and to see how hip hop has evolved over the last 47 years to be the phenomenon that it is, I think that's empowering, especially for young black and brown youth, you know what I'm saying? For them to know that teenagers just like them who come from similar environments, just like them created the most powerful form of expression around the world. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if that was something that was told to me as a, as a young kid getting into the kind of shenanigans I was getting into, you know, that kind of, it, it changes the course. It lets you know that something bigger and better is possible. So I think that we all, one way or another, in, in the hip hop community have a responsibility. It's like each one teach one to try to at least impart wisdom on the youth in your own way. You know what I'm saying? So I think the more that I'm able to do that and still be a man of the people, despite trying to record and be a, a, a rap artist and all of those things, if I could still give game to the younger generation and still be relevant to the younger generation because I'm a, like, I'm, I'm a considered an OG or I, I'm imparting knowledge on them, then I think that that makes for a better, a better future. Yeah, hell yeah, and you're, you're put, yeah, you're putting them in a better position to succeed, man, and and, and stuff like that. And and at the beginning, um, it, when hip hop first started, just like any genre of music, it was a learning experience, and you know maybe right. people didn't get their proper dues as far as money and you know all that stuff. But to pay it forward and let other people not fall into that same trap, that's a that's a powerful thing man because we all are family at the end of the day so hey man uh thank you for doing this interview my brother via zoom and when you're ever over here in this area we'll, we'll probably get one in live or something man when you're out this way hopefully things start to open up and get a little bit you know at least closer to the norm we used to know um especially live shows because i miss that shit sure. my brother i, I tell definitely miss live yeah shows. i'm telling you man that's it now just the you know the uh you know fellowshipping and talking to different people and that enjoy the same thing and seeing a dope live performance just uh, that's all part of the thing that uh one of the reasons i love hip-hop so much but any shout outs you want to make bro let them know yeah you know just shout out shout out everybody in the bay area repping holding me down for the culture hip-hop representing like hip-hop for change shout out to uh, all tribe Zulus, um, you know, all the organizations I'm part of today, Future Sound, Hip Hop for Change, Zulus, um, you know, shout out to y'all for having me on the show. It's a really dope platform what you guys are doing. Uh, so I appreciate that. You know, um, it's peace and love, man. We're just trying out here, you know. Light Years album in stores in your phone right now. <laughs> Make sure we'll you guys go. Make, yeah, make sure you guys go check for that. And he's got a catalog there as well. Once you follow, man, unlearn the world. Uh, again, thank you for coming through, my brother. And we'll look forward to chopping it up one of these days in person. We'll, you know, when you're out in the area, man. So uh, thank you once again, man. And uh, peace out. We'll see you next time, man. Be right back. Peace, we're we're going to play one more video by the homie. And then we'll be right back with our next guest. B side show. Act like you know. Let's go. I went 
back to school down the block from a crack den Where the boys in blue like to shoot at the black men And nowadays shit ain't much different from back then Too black for white homies, talk too white for my black friends I grew up and my first car was a black Benz I even lived in it for a while, but that's past tense Lights, camera, action, the Matrix reloaded Beast mode in West Coast and with my New York accent Lyrics take you places like a Lyft or a Uber Keep one eye open like Slick Rick the Ruler Cause even if I was blind I could still see the future I maneuver through the shooters to prove I wasn't a loser I'm motivated, I got bills to pay and kids to raise Smoking swishing sweets and reminiscing on them simple days Listening to beats when my brain wasn't in the haze Now it's designer jeans, Benz trucks and Gucci shades We're all under the same sun with different shades Above the clouds but I'm underground like a city train My greatest strength came from my greatest pain And that explains all of the many contradictions in my brain Pan-Africanism and mad niggas in prison Mad bitches is tripping, they Instagramming and stripping Our third eye blind cause our people lacking the vision My bigger brother was really cooking that crack in the kitchen Losing our souls on the chase to hold riches These fuck boys are turning women into cold bitches It's an all my wiring to be all inspiring I quit my day job, I overheard God was hiring Make your favorite rapper consider early retirement I'm in the pyramid, the human body with a lion's head I left uptown, wash heights, well advised Not a clown nigga, but if I was, I'd be Pennywise All about my dollars and coins, boy, I'm Pennywise Looking for a dime, playboy bunny, I could energize Luke Skywalker with the ghetto mind Jedi seeing images inside my weed clouds when I heaven climb They say that real niggas never die Self-love, I'm just really trying to be a better eye in your eyes, my revolution will be televised And chocolate Tom Cruise under these blue and vanilla skies Rep a generation traumatized and desensitized Neighborhoods gentrified, black boys left to die Why they telling lies, my brain is where they treasure lies Get the pie, you could get a slice but the rest is mine Stepping up the corporate ladder till there's nothing left to climb Spread my wings wide cause I was told that I could never fly I question the revolution, will our people ever rise? Kill the beat in broad day and get witnesses to testify Pay no never mind to the shit they talk on the news, niggas coming for my crown, but they can't walk in my shoes. They're out my window with my tool by any means, like Brother Malcolm. I took my life in times and I made them a couple albums. The dude who talked the loudest is the dude who ain't about shit. So I move quiet, let my actions move the mountains. Trying to get my mama happy and my pops the proudest. But I be feeling lonely even when the room is crowded. Wowzers, watch how I leave crowds astounded. My verses are ghetto public service announcements. The way I live is hectic, reckless. Using my ex's net. Netflix to Netflix and chill with the next chick I be on some next shit, this ain't even my best shit Still I'm better than any rapper that's on your best list The new rock end with the Mercedes Benz pendant At the end of a thick ass gold rope necklace Knew a lot of dudes that so dope and got arrested Instead I chose hope by using what I was blessed with Eating vegan mint leaf tea for my breakfast Fuck the VIP if I'm on heaven's guest list Strength came from my 
my greatest pain And that explains all of the many contradictions in my brain Pan-Africanism and mad niggas in prison Mad bitches is tripping, they Instagramming and stripping Our third eye blind cause our people lacking the vision My bigger brother was really cooking that crack in the kitchen Losing our souls on the chase to hold riches These fuck boys are turning women into cold bitches It's an all my wiring to be all inspiring I quit my day job, I overheard God was hiring Make your favorite rapper consider early retirement I'm in a pyramid, a human body with a lion's head I left uptown, wash heights, well advised Not a clown nigga, but if I was, I'd be Pennywise All about my dollars and coins, boy, I'm Pennywise Looking for a dime playboy bunny, I could energize Luke Skywalker with the ghetto mind Jedi seeing images inside my weed clouds when I heaven climb They say that real niggas never die Self-love, I'm just really trying to be a better eye your eyes, my revolution will be televised and chocolate time cruise under these blue and vanilla skies, rep a generation traumatized and desensitized neighborhoods gentrified, black boys left to die, why they telling lies my brain is where the treasure lies get the pie, you could get a slice but the rest is mine, stepping up the corporate ladder till there's nothing left to climb, spread my wings wide cause I was told that I could never fly I question the revolution, will our people ever rise, kill the beat in broad day and get witnesses to testify pay no never mind to the shit they talk on the news, niggas coming for my crown, but they can't walk in my shoes. They're out my window with my tool by any means, like Brother Malcolm. I took my life in times and I made him a couple albums. The dude who talked the loudest is 